Okay, guys, so here's the situation. So, you know, we had a tournament today. So, we got up. We actually came last night because we live about two and a half hours away. So, you know, we came down. We stayed last night. And then we got up this morning, you know, ready to fish the tournament. Well, whenever we got here, there was an older guy that said, are you here for the high school tournament? We said, yeah, we're ready. Who do we pay? He's like, oh, that guy hurt his back. They canceled the tournament. Well, and so as y'all can understand, I was triggered. I really didn't know what to do. I mean, I really didn't care if there's a tournament or not. I'm still going to fish, but I'm still triggered, okay? Nevertheless, guys, we're out here. We're about to fish this little bluff point. What we're hoping is that the smallmouth are done spawning, and then they've already came back out to the point. And, you know, the water temperature is about 72 degrees, so there is also a good possibility we may get on to some fry garters, which aren't exactly giants, but they are fun to catch. Here we go. See, having one biting it right there. I don't know if he's a bass or what. Maybe a little spot of bass trying to bite it. See, what is that? Something's hitting it right now. Still following. What is that? Little bitty spotted bass. Really little spotted bass. Well, that's a start, I guess. I don't know. Guess not. There he is. Oh, that's a nice one. I don't know what he is though. Large mouth or a small mouth, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, he's a good one. You can keep him down. He may be a small mouth the way he's jumping. Right on that top water spook. I don't know what he is. It's a big smallie. I got him. Go flip him. Eh, he's a good smallmouth. I don't know how big he is. He's got to be 18 to keep. And I know we're not in a tournament, but we're still going to keep our best five. Unless they're like fry garters or something, and garden fry or something. We'll see if he's a keeper anyhow. He's got to be 18 inches on smallmouth, which he may be 18 inches. I'm not sure. There we go. He's got to be 18. No, he ain't 18. He's like 16. Yeah, he's 16 and a half. 16 and a half inch smallmouth. He was right back there, right in that little cup. And he did hit a top water. Which may mean that they're not necessarily out on the main lake points yet, but they are moving back out in these little pockets. That is a possibility. That is definitely a possibility. Okay, guys, I just spotted either a largemouth or a spotted bass, but either way, he's a pretty good size. He sort of wanted my jerkbait, but he didn't really want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the jerkbait down, get out something a whole lot more natural and a whole lot more subtle and a lot more finesse. Get out my spinning rod right here, and we're going to be fishing a wacky work. And because the water is like super clear right now, we're going to be using a watermelon red color to, you know, imitate blue gear. Now, this could be a fry garter. I hadn't seen any fry, but, you know, I may just not be seeing it. But the worm I'm going to be using is a bio spawn. This is the exo stick. This is good because listen guys whether you rig it weightless texas rig or wacky rig it shimmies on the way down and whenever you're looking for a wacky worm or some kind of stick bait you really want one that shimmies like this right here and that's exactly what this does but i'm gonna rig it about the simplest way you can get you a good wacky worm hook right here find the middle of the worm come right here and hook it just like that now i'm just gonna go pitch it in the area where i saw that bass and hopefully he'll come out and get it little one Dude, oh, he didn't even have a hook in his mouth. He just had the worm in his throat. And also how we're out here sort of just junk fishing, fishing the moment. If we see a bed fish, we'll fish for the bed fish. If we see a good tree, we'll fish the tree. Well, right here, I have a tree right there, a little stick up right there, and then there's one that you can't see under the water. And then on this side of the pocket, there's a bunch of other trees. And to fish these trees, one lure that I'm really wanting to try is a jig. That way, you know, I can pitch to the bottom of it, take my time, jig a little, little bit. Now, this is one of my new rods. I just bought it like not too long ago, first time fishing with it. It's just a Bass Pro Johnny Morse carbon. Line. I got the old combo here and then just this little jig but whenever you fish a jig you need a trailer on and the trailer I'm using today is about is another bio spawn this is the vile crawl it's basically like a little crawl bait I'm gonna put it on the back of this jig you know that way it'll kick on its way down and also guys if you may be wanting to buy with some of these bio spawn baits I have a promo code down in the description get you like ten dollars off your order or something like that I'm not exactly sure what it is but it is a pretty good chunk of a promo code so go check it out if you're you know you're interested and if you're not familiar with bio spawn they do sell more than just crawls and worms they also sell swim baits which my dad is is actually using right now but for this i'm just going to thread it up on there as straight as possible because being straight is very important with trailers to about right there then i'm going to bring it on through slide it right up on the jig and boom there we go now that jig is ready to go flip at a tree and that's exactly what we're going to do we have a little stick up right there all i'm going to do is grab my jig 
pitch it right over there as close to it as possible. Let some line out. That way it'll free spool and sink all the way down to the bottom. And now that it's hit the bottom, I'm going to reel up my slack line. And I'm just going to jiggle a little bit. Just jiggle it just in case there's a fish down there looking at it. Jiggle it, jiggle it. Then I'm just going to reel it in and make another pitch. I'm not going to waste too much time on the bottom. I'm mainly wanting to catch the fish as it falls. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a nice one. That's another good one right there. I don't know if he's a large mouth or small mouth, but... I don't know, but I've got to... I've got to come over here to the side of the boat. I think he's a smallmouth the way he's fighting. Intensely hard. This is insane. I don't even think he's too big of a giant either. He must be though. He's fighting really hard. Yeah, it's another large smallie. I think this is a smallmouth, but he's a keeper. He's either boat. Yeah, this is this would be a keeper smallmouth. Same spot as that last one, a little bit in in from the main lake. Yeah, he choked it right there. That's a good three pounder probably. But here's this guy. We'll measure him. See if he'll end up being 18. My gosh, he's 17 inches. That ain't even a keeper, and he's probably two son and a half pounds. We'll get at the scale and we'll see how big he is. But that is one thing about the lake is you can catch two and a half, three pound smallmouth all day, but none of them could be a keeper just because the size limit has to be so big. Here we go. Yeah, a good two pounds. Two pounds, two ounces. Still a good fight, though. He acted like he was about five. While I'm sitting here, you know, I just retied. I had a little, I don't know how, a little spotted bass broke me off on the hook set. I don't know, I guess it's a weak knot. But while I'm sitting here retying this little exo stick, I figured I'd just pull out the big camera and show you it like I was talking about how it shimmies. We got really clear water today, so you should be able to see it pretty good. Just watch it as it falls right there. See how it shimmies like that? That's what you want in a good wacky worm. Is whenever it's falling on a slack line, it sits there and shimmies like that. And that's what it, that's what's making all these bass eat it. There it is. Little spotted bass. Little spotted bass. He was on his bed too, so on that little exo stick. He's a fat one. Guarding that nest like that. But yeah, I just threw that little watermelon exo stick right over to his bed. He thought it was a little uh, bluegill trying to eat the eggs. Came up and smashed it. He's not a big one, but spots only have to be 12 inches, so he was probably a keeper. Ooh, what was that? Whoa. See? A monster. They've not been biting twice. They've just been biting once. They they won't follow up. I'd like to know if that was a large mouth or a small mouth. There's one. Small mouth, son. What in the world's I don't know. Oh, he came off though. We know he's a smallmouth though. The smallmouth are way back in the pockets. They're not even where I thought they was. They're not back there at all. We're way back in a pocket, guys. I originally thought they'd be out there in the points, but I just hooked one and I'm in the main back of a pocket. I don't know what's up, but at least we figured that out. Let me just recap what's happened today. So we get down to the lake. The tournament is canceled. I'm triggered before we even put the boat in the water. Once we finally actually get into the lake and start fishing, we do start catching some, but a lot of them got off. I had a lot of them blow up on my spoon. But, you know, I didn't catch them, so I really didn't involve them in the video. But I got a lot of blow-ups, guys. I could have probably had five good smallmouth in the boat. But that brings us to our second problem. Technically, today... I caught zero keepers. Even though I caught those two giant smallmouth, well, not really giant, but two good sized smallmouth, and a few spots, I never really, you know, caught a keeper. Except maybe one spot. And that can actually be a quite popular problem on that lake, is that with the 18 inch size limit on smallies, it's sort of hard to decide what to do in a tournament situation. You can either one, Go for the Hail Mary, all or nothing. Risk it for the biscuit. Go for five 18 inch smallmouth, which will put you up in like 18, 15, 17, 19, which a lot of times will get you the win. Or you can go the route of rather being safe than sorry. And you know, go for more predictable, easier to get a limit, largemouth. But with today, I look for largemouth. And I also look for bigger smallmouth, which I never really found. But the largemouth today, like I didn't see any on beds, I didn't see any cruising, and I also didn't see any fry garters, which really like got me triggered 
times two. I did tell you about my carbon light. Yeah, you know, I got a new rod. Well, I also got this new rod, which is the one I was fishing the spook on. Now, I did buy this one used off my good friend, but it is a St. Croix Triumph right there. It is originally a six foot six medium power. And I say originally because on the very tip, guide the insert was gone. And so, you know, I thought I'd be cool and everything. I hopped in the truck. I went to Walmart. I bought me a rod tip replacement kit. Well, long story short, now I have a six foot heavy rod because the tip is gone do not ask me how it was a very long process but now i have a broomstick but it still caught fish as y'all saw today now the reel here this is a johnny morris carbon light series i like it so far i put braid on it and it's done me good so far hey guys make sure you're subscribed to kendall gray and be a gray gangster like and subscribe bye